Okay. So I just do recommend that in this age of Zoom meetings that you either close your eyes or lower your gaze. It can be distracting to stare at the screen. And I like to begin by taking a deep breath in and releasing. <sighs> Just letting that warm, deep breath move into the body, into any areas of tension or tightness, and then breathing out that tension with your out breath. And one more time, an intentional deep breath in and out. And then allowing the breath to just resume its own natural rhythm. I give a little bit of guidance and then we also sit and enjoy the silence even if it's just the silence that allows us to hear our own thinking, that's actually an important part of meditation, to be the witness of whatever is appearing and disappearing in your consciousness. And just gently allowing the breath to move as it reflects whatever state you're in. Whether it's rapid or slow. light and shallow or deep. And measured. Noticing the quality of your breathing. Is the breath smooth or kind of ragged, rough or full of ease? The quality, the nature of breathing in any given moment mirrors the state of mind and heart. And if you don't know what you're feeling, the quality of the breath is a big clue. And noticing how one thing leads to another. 
how maybe a deep, slow breath helps the mind and the body settle. Or how a sudden anxious thought can just sort of jump the whole organism into a state of high alert. And noticing how a thought can trigger certain emotions or feelings. Or how when a feeling or emotion arises, a whole sequence of thoughts come with that. Just sensing and feeling how the thoughts and emotions are reflected in the body and the breath in the body. And just returning to the sensations in the body of the breath. When mindful awareness notices being lost in thought. Just 
shifting your body back an inch or so. If you're lying down, just feeling another layer of relaxation into the ground, the earth. And as settling in happens, just noticing the impulse to move, to scratch whatever itch may be arising, and seeing what happens if you don't. If you just watch that impulse arise and have its being and fall away. And noticing sounds to appearing, lasting for a bit, and fading away.
appreciating that this is also wisdom. How mindful awareness as we sit or lie down or stand, however you're meditating. Mindfulness, loving awareness allows us to pause, to stop, to notice what's happening and how we respond to what's happening.
And just noticing, is it possible to respond to what's happening with some goodwill, with some metta and some tenderness?
so this morning, yes, I want to um, talk a bit about another dimension of wisdom. The wisdom of just cause and effect, we would say karma, actions and consequences. Just understanding that whatever we do, we think, we feel, and how we respond to that actually affects the next moment of our life. And last week I talked a lot about how wisdom really sees what's impermanent and how we can feel that very viscerally. And wisdom also sees this process of how life unfolds, how one thing leads to another, um, how the intentions and actions and um, the seeds that you plant now, that we plant now, that each one of us plants now will bear fruit. Um, just as being born means, if we stay alive, we will grow up, we will uh, mature, we will pass away. This is the nature of life. But uh, in terms of this cause and effect, I want to read you first a quote uh, from Thich Nhat Hanh, where he talks about the seeds that are watered frequently. He says, the mind is like a piece of land planted with many different kinds of seeds, seeds of joy, peace, mindfulness, and understanding, and love, seeds of anger, hate, craving, fear, and forgetfulness. These healthy and unhealthy seeds are always there, sleeping in the soil of your mind, in the earth of your mind. The quality of your life depends on the seeds that you water. You know, if you plant, what, tomato seeds in your garden, right? Tomatoes will grow. And he's saying just so, if you water a seed of peace, in your mind, peace will grow. When the seeds of happiness in you are watered, you will become happy. When the seed of anger is watered, you will become angry. The seeds that are watered frequently are those that will grow strong. And you can see this when something happens, something unexpected happens, you know, what is your reaction? One hour before, uh, I was scheduled to speak with you, to be together with you. The power went out in our whole neighborhood. And of course, the internet shut down, the cellular wasn't working well, and I just had this moment of, oh my gosh, <laughs> what's gonna happen? But it was like, okay, we have an hour, you know, just breathe into it. Um, I called my daughter. I thought, okay, I'll just go over to her house, but she has COVID and she said, she has been out and about in the house, you know, not necessarily staying in her room because nobody was home. So that was a bad idea. <laughs> and um, anyway, my mind, I just watched my mind sort of think, okay, I could go to a hotel, but no, there'll be noise and it won't be private. And just noticing what was going on in my mind. And then um, just as uh, Jack sort of started trying to help and go, see what was you know of course we couldn't go to a neighbor's house everybody's electricity was off uh of course it popped back on it felt like being um this is what it was like it used to be like uh in india where there would be just power outages every once in a while and then it would pop back on you know it just you had to keep saving what you were working on because it could go off at any time so when difficulties come, what seeds are you watering? Are you going to get angry? Oh, it's Spectrum's fault. Oh, it's this one's fault. Oh, who, who crashed into a telephone pole or whatever happened to cause that? Um, is the government really taking care of our electricity grid? I mean, all the thoughts that can come into the mind that are really unpleasant, right? Versus, okay, here we are. What can we do? Um, and then I started thinking, which teachers could teach at you know a moment's notice <laughs> if I couldn't get... Um, anyway, here we are. It worked out. Uh, and fortunately, I actually feel like there are some teachers who could teach at a moment's notice, um, but fortunately didn't have to. 
So when pleasant things come, what seeds are you watering? In your mind, is it the seed of gratitude and appreciation? You know, I read this story about the woman who was struck by lightning in Washington, D.C. and survived. Um, and, you know, she's got burns, she's walking with a walker, she's recovering, and she's filled with gratitude to be alive. It's really, you know, just filled with gratitude and wanting to dedicate her life to be worth there were four people she's the only one who survived and she wants her life to be worth the fact that she got to be alive and survive um, so anytime it's possible to look directly into your mind and heart and see what am I cultivating in this moment because I might not be conscious of it you know so often I'm cultivating seeds of maybe worry or anxiety about the future or, you know, what, what kind of world will the kids inherit, you know, these kinds of anxious thoughts. And, but it's important to notice because these are the, um, this is the stream of consciousness that will, that your mind will follow and your heart will follow. And you can think of it the way that Thich Nhat Hanh, uh, talks about it in terms of seeds that we're planting or seeds that are there and which ones do we water so that they'll germinate. You know, I garden, I have a very tiny yard, but I have um, a lot of flowers in that yard. Um, my landlady, it, it's very challenging because my landlady is often living in this little studio she made out of the garage in back. And, but she doesn't even, she doesn't notice I mean, I think she likes the flowers, but she doesn't notice when they're thirsty or when they... So when I go away, I'm always a little bit anxious. You know, how are they going to do? And in fact, unless I have somebody come over and help water, they don't do well. Um, and yet, I, and I plant flowers. I don't plant because of the going back and forth. Less travel for teaching now, of course, but still, I uh, vegetables require more attention. Uh, I try to grow flowers that don't require that much attention or water. And and when I take care of them, when I'm here, they just flourish, they blossom. And and people, I feel like it's a community service, you know, to plant something pretty in your yard. And then when people walk by, they see it and they're kind of uplifted. And they sometimes they stop and they look at the flowers. Um, and of course, there's insects. and. They love the flowers too, aphids and things like that, obstacles like we have in our lives, right, that aren't healthy. And uh, we can respond and care for those to our inner obstacles and our outer um, aphids and, and uh, <laughs> pests that come. Um, we can look at all the foundations of mindfulness and these are all the places where we can tend our heart and mind and how we do that matters because it affects the hearts and minds of others who are around us um, it just does uh, for example we cultivate the breath internally right as we meditate and these days maybe you're not still wearing masks if you're an older person you probably still are like me I'm still wearing a mask and so I'm cultivating the awareness of my breath externally too. Like, who am I breathing on? And who's breathing on me? I don't know about you. I was never paranoid before about who was breathing on me. Um, but now if I, I pass a whole bunch of people and they're all laughing and talking or maybe singing, instead of laughing and, and being totally joyful with them, I, I veer away and I go around them. It's just, it's, it's weird. This is like, life is weird. Um, Life is weird right now. But I think all of these, these things that we now live with, they can be ways to cultivate mindful awareness. They can be new ways of being aware of, of, um, of the way that wisdom allows us to pause even just for a split second to slow into an experience and see what's happening and what do I want to nurture of what's happening and what do I want to grow of what's happening and um, and this process of noticing and cultivating uh, is something that the Buddha taught I want to read you uh, a teaching that I've always loved it's uh, 
is from a sutra called Plowing. Now, a lot of the metaphors and stories uh, from those days, it was an agrarian society, so a lot of them are about farming, and uh, this one is. So I'm going to read you the story. Early one morning, while on his alms round, that is, going with his begging bowl and getting the food for the day, the Buddha approached an area being plowed in springtime when Bharadvaja was distributing food to his workers. When he saw the Buddha coming for his alms, wanting food, he said, look, I'm obviously paraphrasing, he said, look, monk, I sow and plow, I plant, and after having plowed and sown, then I eat. Do you likewise plow and sow, and after having plowed and sown, do you eat? In other words, he was kind of saying, you know, you slacker, you just come around and want the food that I've worked hard to grow. Um, what, you know, what are you doing to help out before you eat? And the Buddha replies, I too plow and sow, and having plowed and sown, I eat. Then Bharadvaja says, you claim yourself to be a plowman? I see no plow. Tell me, O plowman, what kind of plowing is it that you do? And the Buddha replied, and I love this part, the Buddha replied, trust is the seed and composure is the rain. Clarity is my plow and yoke. Conscience is my guide pole. And my mind is the harness. Wakefulness is my plow blade. I use truth to weed and cultivate freedom. True effort is my oxen drawing the plow steadily toward freedom without regret. This is how I plow, and it bears the deathless as its fruit. We could say it bears presence as its fruit. Whoever plows in this way will become free of all sorrow and distress. And then, having listened to that, Bharadvaja says, Okay, let the venerable monk eat. You are indeed a plowman, and your plowing bears the fruit of freedom. I, don't, I always find this so moving, this passage, um, because, you know, I was young in the era of hippies and back to the land, and, and, you know, I was studying and becoming a professional, but my mind always wished, oh, I wish I could live like my friend Jonelle on off the grid and back to the land. And, and I think, you know, when I read this, it was such a kind of um, affirmation that wherever we are, right, we can be back to the land. We can be back to our source, our roots in life itself, in the source of life, the earth, the water, the sky, and how we cultivate, uh, you know, how do we grow our inner garden and what are the seeds that we're nurturing and what, um, yeah, what, what are we aware of that we want to grow? And, you know, this stopping and slowing into experience, lots of times it's understood, well, you know, I'm hustling, I'm busy, I have to make a living, I have to get an aim for myself, I have to, I have to do these things in order to survive in the world the way it is now. And yet it can be as simple as noticing the little pause between the breaths, the way that I breathe in and then as that in-breath just sort of turns into the out-breath, there's just this tiny little pause of stillness. And often, of course, breathing too quickly, don't notice, but you can actually, you can actually intentionally slow it down a teeny bit and notice it. And um, I know we're supposed to let the breath breathe in its own natural rhythm, but this is just a tiny little way that if you haven't noticed it, just pause intentionally between the breaths for a moment because in that pause is stillness and in that stillness is peace and in that peace is happiness even if it's just a microsecond of it a microchip of it um,
you know, and it's really important, I think, too, um, to focus on what it is that pleases us, what it is that gladdens our hearts, and to feel deserving of following that. Like just being here with you all, it pleases me, it gladdens my heart. I'm not gonna lie, there are some mornings when I'm just like, oh, I don't really feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> but once I get here and I'm with you, I'm so happy. And maybe it's the same for you. You know, I don't necessarily feel like meditating or going to sitting group, but hopefully once you're here, you're glad to be here. I hope, I hope. Um, and, and, you know, this is how Inside LA has actually flourished for 20 years now. And you're part of this, hopefully, hopefully gladdened by the experience. Um, but this is something that we can experience directly just like I was talking about direct experience last week. And what is it that pulls together all these disparate thoughts and feelings and impressions and body sensations? And well, actually it is this sense of goodwill of the intention to cultivate, to plant the seeds that will nurture us with goodness and gladden our hearts as much as we can. And, and this has to do with just the way that I relate to my surroundings, that you relate to your surroundings, your family, your pets, your stuff, um, and your inner stuff, right? Your own stuff. Um, this is skillful. This is to, to be aware of all of this is really skillful. Why? Because when we focus on how we're relating to things and, and form that intention to have it be in a more grateful or positive way, like that woman who was struck by lightning. Um, this is what helps us free our hearts from the hindrances. It helps us let go um, or discard these states of anxiety or worry or fear, um, just unhelpful states, depressive states. Um, and, and the nature of our mind is um, kind of absorptive or imitative, you know, and uh, you, we learn, that's how we learn to talk. That's how we learn to speak languages. Um, that's how we learn to drive or cook or anything else that we do is by just absorbing how to do it. And, and it's also how we are suggestible and how we um, affect each other. You know, I have a dear friend who is uh, suffering from some dementia and I see how hard it is for him to to hang on to his clarity about something when he's with me he's really clear about something that we're talking about but then the next person that he's with let's say could present something very opposite and there is a conflict in his life so it's going on like this and then the next person presents sort of the opposite point of view that to my, to my opinion is not that helpful, but okay. Then he just completely absorbs that point of view. You see, he can't really keep that thread of his own perspective because it's as though the mind has, um, it becomes little again, where it's just kind of learning and absorbing everything and changing according to what's in front of it. Um, and what I think is hopeful for our society right now and we can point to so many unhopeful and scary things and divisive things and um, really kind of terrifying things like climate change or um, terrorism or you know racism or poverty all these really terrifying things um, but we can also focus on the way that I really do feel there's a collective movement toward so many people wanting to wanting authenticity um, especially well, just wanting authenticity, wanting truth. Um, my granddaughter, when she's a junior now um, in college, but when she went to college, she wanted to major in political science and political communication, which she did or she is, because she said, I feel like politicians are not being honest when they speak. Uh, I feel like they're not being really authentic when they speak. And I loved that idealism, that freshness of perspective. Do we expect politicians to be honest and authentic when they speak? Well, a young person is looking at them and expecting that. And she said, I wanna change this. Um, we'll see what happens. But 
when we look at us, when we get that sense maybe of just everything falling apart or falling down around us, um, what happens? You know, what do I choose to do? Well, I choose to connect. I choose to connect with myself. What's happening with me and where my mind is going? Is it going into blame? Is it going into acceptance? Is it going into a kind of peaceful recognition of, okay, here's what I can do or not? Um, and there's like, you know, so many ways that you can do this and that we teach um, over the years. You can be present in your body. You can ask yourself, how am I feeling right now? You can honor however it is by doing what it is that gladdens your heart or brings you pleasure um, by doing nurturing things. I did a post on Friday. I felt a little self-conscious about it, but um, I was making chicken soup for my daughter who has COVID and I had put out, I like put all these vegetables in that she wouldn't eat otherwise probably. Um, but when they're cooked down, you know, you can't really see them anymore. And so there was like kale and there was some broccoli and onion and carrot and celery and they're all on the counter. And I thought, this is beautiful. This is nurturing. This is our food that we are blessed to have. And just this, just the activity of appreciating it, of cooking it, of offering it, you know, this is, um, this is giving energy to myself, well, to my daughter. Um, this is giving energy to you and whoever is around you. Just that simple fact of putting some stuff out and cooking it, you know? And so I think appreciating, it's important um, to appreciate that what you're doing when you're nurturing yourself or when you're doing something to give yourself pleasure, when you're gladdening your heart, when you're watering the seeds of ease and peace and love and presence, um, that you are actually helping everybody who ever comes in contact with you. And maybe the people who don't even come in contact with us, maybe we're creating a, a new kind of, you know, electromagnetic field uh, around us um, that is just a field of generosity, a field of love, a field of caring, um, just by being, just by doing the simple things of our life in a certain frame of mind where we're, you know, watering those seeds. Um, so I think this is, there's, I think this is pretty much what I wanted to share with you this morning. Um, Yes, uh, that's that's good, um, and I will continue. Uh, we'll continue exploring dimensions of wisdom next week too, because there's lots and lots to share. Uh, but when I was talking just now about nurturing these positive seeds and the effect that it has on yourself on everyone whose lives you touch, and maybe people whose lives you don't even touch, who knows, it's quite mysterious um, how we might in the quantum realm be um, entangling and affecting each other with our consciousnesses. But I also, um, I read an article that I found very uplifting about uh, Holland and how they are devoting a lot of their resources to caring for people who are growing old in their society. and that they feel this is really important and that they have um and you probably know about this uh, bob because you speak dutch and everything but that they have a um it, it's part of their sila of their ethical living of their good hearts that they feel you know older people should not have to worry about food and shelter um and also a abilities to not be socially isolated, to connect with others. And, and uh, I'm going to quote just one quote as we close. Um, this is from somebody named Marco Verkevisser from Erasmus University. Um, he says, we have a very strong belief in society, societal responsibility. He's talking about the Netherlands, about Holland. We call this solidarity. It's there. 
we nurture it, and we like it. I loved this. And I feel like, you know, this is true. We have these inner resources that we cultivate in our practice here. And we, uh, we nurture them, and we like them. Don't you like feeling better? I do. <laughs> and just seeing this as an expression of our societal interconnectedness and solidarity, I think, is something um, beautiful. Because every generation, you know, every generation actually does do a better job than the generation before. Although the generation before usually has a very grumpy, difficult time acknowledging that. But it is true, I think. And um, so we're just celebrating the, the watering of the seeds of goodness and authenticity and presence in our life today. <sighs> So thank you everybody and just take a moment to have a sip of your water and think about what you might like to reflect on in our conversation, if you have any responses. It doesn't have to be to this morning's teaching at all, just to a response to what's happening in your life and your practice would be fine. And. Uh, I look forward to seeing your raised hands and, and sharing with you.